Hamburga. Watching Five Star Live, presented by Waffle House, East Tennessee's number one post game high school football show. Live, live on location from the biggest game of the week. Live interviews from the winning coaches and players, along with highlights from other games around East Tennessee. Your hosts Jesse Smithy and Kevin Smith. With decades of experience covering and coaching high school sports, along with the five-star preps team, will update you on games as they become final and will break down region outlooks and what's to come for your favorite football teams and top players. Now, get ready for the most comprehensive high school football coverage in Tennessee on Five Star Live. Live. All right, everybody, welcome into Five Star Live, presented by Waffle House. It's week three of the high school football season. We're here at Anderson County High School in Clinton, Tennessee, where the Mavericks down Fulton tonight, 43-20. to Big, big win for Anderson County. We'll have an interview with Zach Shannon right here to my left coming up, star linebacker at Anderson County High School. We'll also have Davey Gillum, head football coach, Anderson County High School on the set. Shortly, we'll have highlights from this game. We'll have highlights from Greenville Elizabethan. I will have highlights from Oak Ridge and Clinton and many, many other games in the area. So stay with us tonight. Got about. For that, it is uh, pertaining to Anderson County history. And if you can get that right, you'll get a prize pack from Healthy James. So as I promised, we have Zach Shannon, linebacker from Anderson County High School. Zach, thanks for joining us on the on the show tonight. Congratulations on the win. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coming in, Fulton and had a lot of headlines. They had a 2-0 start. They had some electric players on offense. From a defensive standpoint, what was key for you guys tonight against Fulton? Uh, we were just making sure, because they're so much faster than we are, we were making sure we set edges and could just get low and tackle. Yeah, I mean, they had a, a quarterback who can get out and, and run or throw. They got Marcellus Jackson, number one, who we'll see some highlights of tonight, who can you know make big yeah. plays happen. When you're going against a team like that, I mean, you've got to have focus for all four quarters. Yeah. You can't really take a playoff, right? Yeah, absolutely. We um, we had to make a couple changes along the line, but, I mean, the main thing all night was just contain the quarterback and contain the, the running backs and, I mean, all the fast guys because everybody's just – Speedy. You're making plays on offense now as well, and I, I know you know there's some colleges here tonight looking at you and talking with you. And what's gone into this senior year, just for you individually? Oh, I mean, I've I've worked countless hours, winter, summer, seven on seven, practice every day. It's just it's a nonstop grind. I think I, I either tweeted it or wrote about it when I saw you at Media Day mm -hmm. at, at the KFO Me KFO A excuse me Media Day out at, at Three Ridges mm -hmm. Golf Course. You looked different. I mean, yeah. it looked like you'd really Mm -hmm. Put in some grind hours in the yeah, weight room. Definitely have. Every day, every day in the winter, twice a day, I'd get up early in the morning, work out, then come work out with the team in the afternoon. So for Anderson County, this is a, a program that, you know, has gone, gone into the playoffs every year, second, third round, what have you. Um, you guys come out this year 0-2 start. I think everybody knew you were better than 0-2 yeah. start. But did you feel any kind of sense of urgency tonight? Like, we have to get this mm -hmm. win. It's a region game. I mean, obviously, with a region game, we knew that we had to get the win to put us up in the region. But, I mean, it was just no pressure to just go out and play ball. What's Has there been anything different in terms of how this team is prepared for this season, given that you all moved out of the Chattanooga kind of base region into this region with Fulton and, and some other local teams? It's, did you all prepare any, any different? Uh, not really. We just stuck to, uh, stuck to everything we've normally done, just prepared like normal. I know you all will go back and watch film, all that tonight or this weekend. Just top of your head, what do you feel like the next step is for Anderson County? Uh, I feel like we just got to play better as a team for four quarters. I mean, we, we get down on ourselves at certain points, and we just we really lose our juice, and then something will happen, and we get it back, and then we start rolling again. So I think we got to keep that juice the whole whole four quarters. Well, Zach, man, I appreciate you sticking around with us and, and hanging out for the at the end of the game. Talk to us. Congratulations on the win. See you around later on this season. We'll drop the mic there. We'll have uh, Coach Gillum join us up here on set. We'll go ahead and, and bring him in. And uh, yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, that was Zach Shannon, linebacker tight end at Anderson County, now joined by Davey Gillum, head football coach with the Mavericks. And uh, Coach Gillum, congratulations on the win. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having us. Big, big win for you guys. I was talking with Zach there about 0-2 start. Y'all play some tough teams. I think everybody knew what you were capable of, but yeah. it was finally in region play. You got to got to win these games. Yeah, you do. There's there's no rest for the weary. Like I said, we play two good teams. Um, you know, from our side, we feel like we should have played better and could have won either one of those. Um, but um, we got a lot of youth on the field as far as guys that just haven't played a lot of Friday night football, and uh, we're just making a lot of timely mistakes in those first two games, and we made some tonight. Um, but with every game, we're cutting those down. Uh, but it was it was a big deal to um, get a win tonight against Fulton. Fulton's, you know, 2-0. They're kind of coming in with a lot of confidence, and my fear for our guys was – We've not been 0-2 in a long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, 0-2 is hard on me yeah. as a 43-year-old man, yeah. confidence-wise. But it's really hard on um, young guys, um, emotional 16-year-olds. Um, so, I mean, we, we know we, we got a high potential. But at the same time, I was definitely concerned that um, two losses in a row early, regardless of the opponent, they're, they're both great. But it don't matter at the end of the day we're 0-2. So, um, uh, Fulton probably – we had some urgency, but um, at the same time, we, we needed this win to, to get back and start heading in the right direction confidence-wise. When the TSSAA reclassified it and you guys saw what you are going to be up against in four this year, did that create a sense of urgency or or did that motivate the offseason workouts even more? Because I know y'all y'all go at it hard anyway. We do. Um, you know, um, we didn't change anything as far as time, but you're, you're right. Um, you know, the first year we're in Chattanooga, we don't know anything about those guys. Um, in fact, you know, if you're just keeping up with scores, I've seen, you know, East Ridge in the second round, third round, and winning, and this and that. But they're playing Stone Memorial and um, Division Region Three. We don't know anything about any of those guys. Mm -hmm. So, you know, going into the season, you know, four years ago, we were as excited and focused as you could be. But after two years, we hadn't lost a region game and really hadn't had a close one. Mm -hmm. And these kids ain't done. And with social media and all that's out there, it, I wouldn't, we never prepared different. But, you know, when we play power, we play Greenville, I mean, we step on the field on Monday, there's a different level of focus from mm -hmm. our kids. And, you know, it's my job and our coach's job to get that out of them. But at the same time, they're not dumb. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely been a whole different level of urgency in the yeah. offseason. And I, I like that. Uh, I like the big games. Uh, that's what high school football is about. I mean, people want to see us play pal. They want to see us play science Hill. They want to see us in Fulton play. And we enjoy that. Um, but it, it's tough. Jerry, let's go ahead and roll some highlights, if we can, uh, of Anderson County's win tonight over Fulton. And, Davey, we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, Fulton obviously came in 2-0, and started to garner a lot of headlines just because of some of the players they have on offense. And early on in the game, y'all have them backed up. It's fourth down. Their punter is Marcellus Jackson, who came in averaging 44 yards a kick, and he's back there. And I didn't have my video camera. We're going to snap to it here in a second. But they caught you. Kind of describe what happened there. Mental mistake. They they convert on a fake down. I think it's fourth and twenty two. Oh yeah, close to their own end zone, and uh, they're able to scoot one down the field on you guys. You know, um, right there. He's a special player. We kn we knew that. Uh, he's not a real big kid, but you know, he's one of the more electric runners in East Tennessee right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just poor job on my part, uh, getting us in a good position on fourth and eternity there, where we're not. You know, when they do that rugby pun, he's he's definitely not afraid to pull it down and go. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was a call or he just saw a gap and he's got the freedom to do that. So, great job by him. Poor job on my part making sure that um, we get him off the field on fourth and big. Um, and really, honestly, that was a game changer. We were definitely controlling the game. Um, had everything right where we wanted it. And, you know, they um, they get seven points and changes the whole momentum of the game at that point. Yeah, they got seven points on that on that fake punt, and then they, they get a defensive turnover on the other end, and they're full control. But your guys never really panicked. They kind of stayed the course, and we see them making plays. They come up with a big interception here, and uh, you're able to, to garner some momentum, momentum going into uh, really the we second did. quarter into halftime. We did. You're right. Um you know, we're, we're going down the field at, at wheel, and um, uh, I think we drop a slant on the first series, and then we got one 
it was going to be a touchdown, and we drop it and pitch it to them. Mm-hmm. And, but we um, everything seemed to be going, I guess, just as far as breaks go. And, um, you know, that was a little worrisome for me because, um, you know, we use a lot of Bible principles in, in things we do. But the Bible says a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Sometimes you get 0-2, you start finding ways to mess up. Mm-hmm. When when things are going great, you still find a way to mess up. And we, we had to um, keep our heads up keep our chins up and keep fighting and the kids did a good job of that it wasn't as pretty as we wanted it uh, as clean as we wanted but the the toughness was there and the kids fought through it and um made, made a lot of big plays as the game went gavin no, cleaner yeah gavin no scored a touchdown looks like y'all are kind of in control fulton fumbles their their lineman seth vaughn picks it up and runs it down to midfield and and then they get inside the red zone and uh, just you know fulton didn't quit for a while, and Marcellus Jackson comes up with a big catch there. But yeah. defensively, you guys made the plays that you needed to, to, to make late in the game to kind of finally pull away. Yeah, we did. Uh, that little throwback pass head right there was a great call. Mm-hmm. Great job by Garrison Terry, who's um, playing corner on the other side of the field, to have the savviness to to come off his receiver and come up and make that play. And the kid yeah. that caught it's a great athlete, too. So it wasn't an easy tackle. Great play. Um, like you're saying, kids made plays. Fulton was fighting. Um, they drove the ball all the way down the field there. And the, the running back they had, uh, uh, he played hard tonight. He ran hard. So um, they did some really good things. Um, and number one made some plays to get him down there. That that skinny post he caught, I mean, it was a well-covered play. The kid went up and got it. I ask this to Zach Chan. I'll ask it to you. What's the one thing that you take away from this game that – I feel like, or you say, I feel like we have to get better at this going into week four. You know, uh, unfortunately, it's the same thing I've said the last two weeks. Um, We've played good teams. I I will say, um, Fulton up front on defense surprised me. Mm -hmm. Those guys were um, better than I thought. Mm -hmm. They gave us some issues. Um, And I was was a little shocked how how much trouble we had with them. But um, we took over late in the game. Other, Other than... Uh, uh, a couple of really special kids um, most of our problems were still self-inflicted and eventually that falls on me some of it's youth and it, you just gotta everybody's gotta get more comfortable and a little more polished on Friday nights you know these are big stages and um, you know Powell, Science Hill and Fulton it, uh, you know it's sometimes it can be hard to cut your teeth against some of the best uh, the good news is we're holding our own and we're making progress um, we just got to keep our heads up and get through it. I feel really good about where we can be week 10 going into the playoffs. I think we got a high ceiling of potential. You know, I think Walker can throw the ball as good as anybody in the state. And I think we've got receivers as good as anybody in the state, running backs as good as anybody. We got some special playmakers on defense, all them top things. But we got to play cleaner. A lot of our youth is on the OL, and they're doing really good. But sometimes confusion in assignments and different fronts and things uh, has been our issue. So, we just got to play cleaner football, you know, like that fake punt. Just um, and that, that falls on me. Um, um, but I think as we go, some of those things will take care of themselves. Yeah. Well, Davey, thanks so much for having us tonight. Thanks Congratulations on the win. Yeah, Fulton falls to Anderson County tonight in a big region affair. Uh, we're going to have Kevin Smith up on the set here in just a minute. We'll break down the X's and O's of it all. We'll kind of look at some games around the area. Again, we'll have highlights from Greenville, Elizabethan, Oak Ridge, Clinton, many other games as well. Before we get to our break, it's trivia time, though. And as always, we try to do a trivia question that pertains to where we are broadcasting from. Tonight's trivia question, Healthy James trivia question is, Anderson County has one Mr. Football winner in its school history. I know you know the answer, so try to keep it to yourself. That was back in 2001. All you have to do is name that player, hashtag it five star live on social media. We'll scroll through all the answers, find a winner. If that's you, we'll announce it here later on in the show. Again, what was the lone Mr. Football winner in Anderson County football history? That was back in 2001. So again, hashtag it five star live. We'll pick out a winner here just shortly. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We're going to break down highlights from around the area. Don't go anywhere. Five star live presented by Waffle House. Oh, 
Stoker Rental Company is your hometown go-to spot to rent equipment and tools. We offer fast delivery on late model, low hour, boom lifts, excavators, track skid steers, scissor lifts, and more. Coker Rental Company prides itself on great customer service and providing the best equipment and tools at a reasonable rate. Give us a call today at 865-457-1478 and let us be your go-to rental company for your next project. Tapered Men's Grooming Studio is Knoxville's premier barbershop. Conveniently located in the center of K-Town, Tapered will have you feeling and looking your best. We offer walk-in appointments and we specialize in haircuts for both young and old. Our master barbers will give you the best haircut you can find in a style that is unique to you. Come and see us today or check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Welcome back to Five Star Live, presented by Waffle House. As promised, Kevin Smith joins me up here on the set. Kevin, have you every every week you tell me, "Hey, I've never been here." Have you been to Anderson County? Yeah, we were out here last year for the live That's game right. with, with Green okay. Bulls. And, and I'm talking about that. And I, I played here or coached here multiple times, and I was just commenting to Coach Gillum there that you know watching this game tonight kind of brought back flashbacks. Anderson County and Fulton were the two teams that we always had trouble with and always had to get past. Yeah. at Catholic in order to, to try to win a state championship. So, we're going to roll highlights from this game, and I, I want to get your thoughts on it because a, a lot happened on really on both teams tonight. And, of course, there's the fireworks show at Anderson County that they're kind of known for. It really gets good out here when it starts getting dark yes. early. and You can see all the fireworks, and they can do some more theatrics coming out. But uh, tonight, Fulton hit them early, uh, got them with the fourth down, fourth and 22, back up against their own goal line pretty much, and Marcellus Jackson is their punter, and I didn't have my video camera rolling because I thought they were just going to punt from where they were, and then next thing you know, he's running, I don't know how many yards down for a touchdown. Well, when you're Fulton and you're Coach Black, what a weapon to have him back there as your punter, and they're doing the rugby rollout. If you don't know rugby punt, they're mm -hmm. rolling out. He's got the green light at all times, Jesse. It actually bit him in the rear later in the game where he, he shouldn't have gone. But in this situation, Anderson County just did not have an edge player. You always have to set the edge and punt. And Coach talked about that. They'll fix that and clean that up. But that's a huge play and a momentum play when you're trying to get out in a region win to give up seven points on fourth and 22. That hurts. Are they not the score with a, a really impressive touchdown catch and then come back and defensively really did a good job of, of hemming up uh, some of Fulton's big playmakers tonight. Yeah, I thought Anderson County defensively w w stole the show tonight, really. Mm -hmm. And the, the two main guys for me tonight for Anderson County were the two defensive ends. One guy, Shaq, Zach Shannon, who was on the broadcast earlier, or linebackers, whatever. They were five techniques and outside nine techniques outside with Gavin No. Gavin No, the running back, played a lot of outside yeah, linebacker and defensive end tonight. They were absolutely critical to Anderson County's success defensively tonight and giving the secondary an opportunity to make plays. Anderson County had a chance late in the first half to really put this game away. They had the ball two times deep in Fulton territory uh, and, and didn't make that happen. They just kept letting Fulton stay around. Yeah, they had two turnovers. They had two turnovers on downs in the first half and a turnover. They threw an interception on Fulton's seven yard line. I mean, if you really look at that, that's almost three touchdowns or 21 points there that they left on the board. And you're right. As, as a young football team, you got to find a way to put good teams away, especially this Fulton team who came in with a lot of confidence and was playing well early. And I think you heard Coach Gillum talk about it. Fulton's D-line is for real. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize it on film. And then when you get out here and how tough and physical they are, they, they cause a lot of problems for Anderson County tonight. And Seth Vaughn, who's on that defensive line, he picks up this fumble on offense. This was his first game back. He had some health issues that they were exploring, making sure that he was okay. He got clear for this game tonight. So I'm not sure we got to see 100% Seth Vaughn, like in shape, middle of the football season. I think he'll be a different player later on. Absolutely. It kind of goes back to what we are talking about with Walter Nolan when he gets in shape. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something, the first drive, two tackles for a loss, quarterback hurry, that ended up being an interception. So he was active early. You saw the fatigue later in the game. But, yeah, you, if you're Anderson County, man, you played really good defense tonight, which is has been a problem the last couple of weeks. 
and you saw some guys offensively. They're, they've got some good receivers. Walker uh, hit some passes. Gavin Doe was running hard. The offensive line was gelling a little bit more. And this was a good, another good test for Anderson County. We've mm-hmm. been talking about how strong their schedule is early. They may not see another D-line like this Fulton one. Mm-hmm. And the athletes that Fulton had offensively that they have to tackle in the open field, this was a really good test for them and something they can go back and clean up a lot of their mistakes and turnovers on downs, but something that they can build on and get ready for the playoffs. Yeah, when you look at those 4A playoffs and you look at Elizabethan and Greenville and you see Fulton, you see South Doyle, all these teams that could possibly get in the way, Carter, Gibbs, Facing all these athletes from the Powells, the Science Hills, and and Fultons of the world is definitely going to make them better. Now, whether they win those playoff games, I don't know. That remains to be seen. But as you mentioned, they'll be better prepared this time around when they get to the play. I don't think they'll be nervous or scared or anything. I'm not saying they were last year. I just feel like they'll they'll feel different going into those games. Yeah, and I think last year they like he was talking about with the with the region. They're going to see more speed every week in and week out now. And so it's not a shock when you get in the playoffs because you just can't practice speed. And so now there's it's not going to be a shock to them to see that speed. But, yes, the young guys have got to step up. And this is an Anderson County team tonight. There's a lot of things to be happy about, but there's a lot of things they got to work on, including when you have a good team down, you got to put your foot on the on the gas and you got to, you got to put them away. And they did not do that tonight. Credit Fulton for hanging in there. But, I mean, if you think about it, 22-14 at halftime, Fulton's supposed to get the ball first. Anderson County Pooch kicks it and recovers the fumble or the kick and then punch it in from seven or three yards out with Gavin No. If Fulton goes down and scores at that point, we may have a tie ball game. So you're talking about Anderson County really let them kind of stay in the game until that moment. And that's what came back to bite them against Greenville last year. Just weren't able to you know, put their foot on the on the throat and finish that off. So nevertheless, they get the win tonight, 43-20. Certainly appreciate everybody at Anderson County for their hospitality having us out tonight. The game of the week also in foray, way up in uh, Elizabethan, Upper East Tennessee, where the two-time defending state champions, 31-game win streak, that win streak is over, and it's over in a big, big way. Greenville gets the win tonight, 42-12. to We have highlights of that young man right there, Mason Gudger. He's having himself a football season. Yeah, another good running back here in the, in the greater Knoxville, uh, East Tennessee area. you got to go out and watch him play. Five touchdowns tonight. Yep. Absolutely phenomenal. We saw this Greenville offensive line last year in this Anderson County game. Big and physical, and they were young. They're only getting better. And then this young man at quarterback, he's got some weapons on the outside side he is so cool calm and collective he and, and just runs this offense like a just perfect and that's jacoby gillespie number seven he was a mr basketball finalist yes. he's going to belmont to play basketball a great dual sport athlete when i put out a list of top dual sport athletes you can bet your bottom dollar he was on there but mason gudger tonight uh number two like you mentioned five touchdowns he had 177 yards uh rushing in uh, in greenville I picked Greenville to win. I know there's some other people picking them to win because you look back to last year and they had so much stuff go wrong at the start of the year. Players getting hurt, uh, coaches taking over late. It just was the worst things that could have happened for Eddie Spradlin at the start of his head coaching career at Greenville. And still, by the end of the playoffs and the quarterfinals, they were this close to beating Elizabethan uh, 24 to 20. And with all that they had coming back and Greenville losing some. Uh, excuse me, Elizabeth, and losing some key, key players, it just seemed like it had all the makings for a Greenville win. Yeah, and, and you're seeing that that young talent really you know step up and, and play really well. And this is a scary Greenville team. They've got explosiveness on the outside in the receiving core. They've got a running back who can do it all and out of the backfield. We've seen that multiple times with them. They've got a good young quarterback. They've got a physical offensive line. And let's not forget that defense that sat out here and, and really gave Anderson County fits last mm-hmm. year as well. This is a team that they're just building and building and building. And now a win like this tonight, you talk about building confidence for them moving forward and showing them that they've got what it takes to, to go all the way. 42-12, to 12, Greenville wins over Elizabethan. Bryson Rollins, the Mr. Football finalist from last year, the quarterback at Elizabethan, only had 110 yards passing tonight. He still rushed for about 80 yards and got a touchdown on the ground. But them not having Parker Hughes, the Mr. Football winner, 4A Mr. Football winner, our Offensive Player of the Year last year, I think that showed tonight. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a 
a security blanket. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a quarterback's best friend. You know, they say tight ends, but at the high school level, anybody, your guy as a quarterback, he's yeah. gone. That's tough. But let's also give credit to Greenville's defense. Greenville's defense showed up tonight and made his life difficult, and you saw that with, with all the stats there. This was supposed to be Clinton's year, Clinton's year to beat the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Clinton had not beaten Oak Ridge since uh, the 2000s. I believe it had been 12 or 13 years. Clinton started the year 2-0. and Oak Ridge came in limping in at 0-2, and, and just beautiful shots here from uh, Jeremy Kidwell running the drone. Or shout out, Jeremy. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. New, new synthetic turf field out at Clinton High School, and they came in with a lot of confidence. Again, they feel like they had the dudes to beat Oak Ridge, and for a while tonight, they were doing that. They had a 7 to nothing lead for a while. Oak Ridge searching for, for what to do on offense, and this this is still an Oak Ridge team that I think can piece it together late and get into the playoffs. I'm not saying they're going to the state championship, but there might be some red flags going off. Well, you know, this is an Oak Ridge team who's been here before, and they know how to get out of this. Yes, they've got some different players in different positions and and guys who haven't played as much on Friday nights, but this is a team that is still loaded with talent, a team that can score in a hurry, and when Kendall Jackson gets back, he hasn't been healthy, and a couple of players get eligible. I think this is an Oak Ridge team that you're not going to want to face moving on in the season. As for Clinton, you saw Joshua Keith, the the quarterback, throwing uh, there inside the red zone, and even though they did not win this game, I think that Clinton can take some good things away from this. The fact that they were in this game for four quarters with Oak Ridge. Uh, Kendall Jackson, who you saw run there, uh, he's been not healthy or, or what have you. He came back tonight and really ran the football hard in the fourth quarter from, from what I've been told and helped kind of punctuate that win. But Clinton, I think, showed the fight that its community wanted to see against Oak Ridge. And maybe the win against Oak Ridge comes in 2022 or 23, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the gap seemed to close tonight. Yeah, it was a great crowd there. This is the type of games you want here. Oak, Oak Ridge and Clinton right over here at Anderson County. Great crowd here as well. Uh, it's good for the community. And, yes, Clinton can take some, some positives from this game. But for me, it's more about Oak Ridge. And Oak Ridge has been here before. They were here last year. When they get their, when they get a couple of their guys healthy, I don't think I don't think we're going to be seeing Oak Ridge have many problems. And I think we're going to see an Oak Ridge team really uh, really put it together as the season progresses. Remember, they'll, they'll still get Elijah Rogers, who's a uh, Power Five prospect. They'll get him back very soon. Uh, he'll join the lineup and, and and make that offense a, a little bit better. Wide receiver who also play some defensive back. So that's a another card in the deck for for Joe Gaddis. Well, and if that, I mean, if he's as good as advertised, yes, you're talking about two of the best receiving. That's one of the best receiving cores yeah. in the entire state of Tennessee. Uh, so that they can be very explosive. Yeah, offensive. they actually moved Brandon Hayward, who was big in that game against South Oil, over 200 yards receiving. They moved him to quarterback a little bit tonight, and uh, we're able to move the football. So maybe they do what Oak Ridge did a few years ago and just kind of move an athlete back under there under center and kind of piece together an offense sometimes that can work <laughs> sometimes look, at the end of the day a lot of times your best athletes at quarterback yeah. so uh sometimes we, we kind of saw that tonight i mean fulton has a really good athletic quarterback so yes sometimes you put your best athlete there and we'll make an offense work with him at the, at the at position a lot of division one coaches out at carnes tonight you're not used to seeing that carnes of course has deshaun bishop the star running back junior who came in averaging more than 300 yards rushing per game that sounds stupid to even say out loud and of course Powell has yeah, Powell has playmakers all over the field, so a lot of people wanted to see if that young man, number eight, Deshaun Bishop, could run all over Fulton. Fulton, or excuse me, not Fulton, but Powell. Powell been struggling defensively. We talked about that, averaging or giving up 50 points per game on defense. They did a better job of that tonight. Carnes got a couple of late touchdowns to, to save a little face, but this was all Powell tonight. And they needed it. I mean, defensively, they needed to fly around to the football, make plays, calls turnovers, get off the field and get that vaunted offense back on the field so they can put points on the board. They needed a showing like this. And especially, you know, Carnes has a very big offensive line, and obviously Bishop is what he is. And for them to get this type of victory and do it the way they did, this is huge for Powell moving forward. See Jordan Potts get in there on, on the rushing touchdown. I think a lot more of the Jonas on the running game will fall on that young man's shoulder. And Stockton uh, out injured for a little bit right now. So kind of a patchwork kind of backfield for, for Powell's offense, but still, his running ability, his scrambling ability can just manufacture yards. I tell you, it's a night. It, 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 he's a problem for defensive coordinators, and what I love most about him is, is number one, he's a competitor, Jesse, 
But number two, you saw there he's scrambling and getting some yards, running the football. Mm -hmm. But one of the best traits I've seen out of him is that he can scramble behind the line of scrimmage and keep his eyes up, which is very hard to do, and find receivers streaking down the field when the DBs come up. And it's a it's an unbelievable trait for him, and it, it makes it makes him one of the best quarterbacks here in the state of Tennessee. Good passing touchdown there for Carnes. They need that. They need something to show on film to defensive coaches that you can't just key on our guy or we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to put nine guys in the box and, and play man coverage. Still, Deshaun Bishop, he's going to he's a talent. He's going to get loose, and and Carnes. Two, was 2-0 two and o for the first time in more than a couple decades. Uh, Powell gets the win tonight uh, in, in impressive fashion, 47-20. Uh, to 20. So uh, we'll have game stories from there. We'll have pictures. We'll have videos. We'll have game stories from here tonight at, at Anderson County. We'll have game stories from Oak Ridge and even Elizabeth. And we, went, we sent three guys up to Elizabeth tonight to shoot video pictures and, and to write a story. So all that will be on the site later on tonight. I remind you, if you're watching at home of our trivia question from Healthy James, if you get it right, you get a food pack, prize pack from Healthy James. And that trivia question is, in 2001, Anderson County won its only Mr. Football trophy in its history. Name the player. Hashtag at 5 Star Live on Twitter. We'll search through all the answers and find a winner. We'll announce that later in the show. All right, we're going to catch a break. When we come back, we're going to do our Waffle House hotline, and we're going over to Clinton High School where Joe Gaddis is there, victorious head coach Joe Gaddis, and we'll hear from Joe right after the break. Everybody, this is Ari Dickey, former Vol and NL Cy Young Award winner in 2012. I'd love for you to join me for the FCA Night of Influence Banquet on September the 15th. That's September the 15th at Knoxville Expo Center. You can go to fcaknoxville.org for more information. Join me. You're not going to want to miss it. North Knox Siding and Windows is a complete exterior home improvement company that can help you with all your exterior needs. Visit us today at 5618 North Broadway. Shop at Elliott's. Your journey is our purpose. You're watching Five Star Live. Live. East Tennessee's number one post-game high school football show. Live on location from the biggest game of the week. Live interviews from the winning coaches and players, along with highlights from other big games from around Tennessee. Your host, Jesse Smithy, with decades of experience covering high school sports, and his five-star preps team will update you on games as they become final and will break down region outlooks and what's to come for your favorite football teams and top players. Players. Now, get ready for the most comprehensive high school football coverage in Tennessee on Five Star Live. Hey, Coach, um, how you feeling tonight after uh, the win, and, and what do you do going forward? What do you fix this week in practice? Well, first half, we were terrible on offense, which, which is now, I guess that's uh, ten quarters in a row. We weren't very good on offense. But the second half, uh, they fixed a lot of things, at least tonight. Uh, within this game because I told the team coming in, if we can run the ball on Clinton, we're going to beat them. And we didn't do that in the first half. We didn't do much of anything in the first half. Second half, we ran the ball on them. We won the game. Um, so we still get a lot better on the offensive side. Defensively, holding this team to seven points after they scored 50, 40, whatever it was uh, against William Blunt and then against Austin East. Our defense is good. It'll get better. But offensively, we make some uh, improvement in the second half. We need to keep that up. You had quite a few penalties tonight going forward. How do you fix that? Well, here's the thing I'm going to say. Our penalties tonight were nothing like last year when, when both teams ran their mouths. It was embarrassing almost last year. Tonight's penalties weren't that type of penalty. 
I can live with some of the penalties we got tonight because we can fix those. But when guys lose their poise and composure like a year ago, uh, that's something I, I don't uh, handle well, and we didn't do that tonight. After two tough games to begin the season, you going in tonight, you had about three tough quarters, and you just started to take control. How are your players feel and how are they holding up? Uh, of course. They feel great uh, tonight. Uh, you know, like I said, we, if you're from Oak Ridge, you, you can't lose to Clinton. That's just one thing you can't do. And uh, I told them earlier, in my time here, we were 18-2 and two against them. Unfortunately, I remember the two much more than the 18 wins. Um, but I thought our guys stepped up and did a good job, did what they had to do in the second half. The defense was great in the second half. Offense finally came to life. Absolutely. You get, tonight, you got that run game going. Thank and it was absolutely dominating. How would you do that? Was it something with the offensive line? Was it combined effort? Or was I, think, it just I think it was a combination of, of hard running. It was a combination of, I think, making some good adjustments uh, on the offensive coaching staff. And it was also a combination of offensive line blocking things we asked them to do. Congratulations. Hey, Coach. Uh Coker Rental Company is your hometown go-to spot to rent equipment and tools. We offer fast delivery on late model, low hour, boom lifts, excavators, track skid steers, scissor lifts, and more. Coker Rental Company prides itself on great customer service and providing the best equipment and tools at a reasonable rate. Give us a call today at 865-457-1478 and let us be your go-to rental company for your next project. Tapered Men's Grooming Studio is Knoxville's premier barbershop. Conveniently located in the center of K-Town, Tapered will have you feeling and looking your best. We offer walk-in appointments and we specialize in haircuts for both young and old. Our master barbers will give you the best haircut you can find in a style that is unique to you. Come and see us today or check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Welcome back to Five Star Live, presented by Waffle House. Make sure you're going by Waffle House late tonight, 1 in the morning, whenever you like to go to Waffle House. Get you some bacon and eggs, waffles, pancakes, whatever you like to order there. Really appreciate them sponsoring the show as they have uh, in the past. And now the title sponsor of Five Star Live, good, good people at Waffle House. And uh, just definitely one of my favorite places to, to frequent when on the road or uh, some nights. I get, I'm get i up late, man. I, w I work till like 3 or 4 in the morning, so... Sometimes I have to hit up Waffle House. All right, let's take a look around the area. Alcoa won easily on Thursday night, 63-8 to over Northview Academy. Uh, Bearden gets, gets another win, 42-7. to They're off to a really good start, 2-1 and one now. They got that playing great defense. Yeah, really good defense, and uh, got that big win against Oak Ridge a week ago. Uh, scrolling down here, Coalfield beat Harriman, 62-18. to I remind everybody, our Coalfield game film documentary comes out on Tuesday night next week, live on our YouTube channel. 8 p.m. start, and I watched this twice today, and I was reaching for the Kleenex. I mean, it's a uh, they lost their coach to COVID back uh, the last day of the high school season, uh, state championship Saturday, and and Keith Henry lost his brother a month later to COVID, and uh, to see that community rally around one of their own new head football coach Benson Napier, and uh, just a great great job by Sam Scott who puts those together for us. So Tuesday night. 8 o'clock on YouTube. Check out the live premiere. All right, Greenback wins easily tonight, 57 to nothing over Sunbright. We told you about the Greenville win, 42 to 12 over Elizabethan, snapping their 31 game uh, win streak. Webb, 44 to nothing tonight over Notre Dame. Now we're starting to see that offense come to life. Yeah, and they've got the players to do it. They should be kind of put the pieces together and get some confidence in what they're doing. It's been a long time yeah. since they've done anything different than the wing tee. So a uh, good win for Webb tonight. Got the LED lights flashing tonight. Anderson County still celebrating. Hey, man, dude, listen, Anderson County's worth just coming to see all the show outside of football. Yeah. Uh, from the fireworks before and after the game. 
the light show. Uh, <laughs> they're coming out in the smoke. I mean, Anderson County does it right for their young men for, for, for a football game. Jefferson County wins. They get another win. Remember, they went winless last year, now 2-1, 17-14 tonight over William Blunt. Kingston improves to 3-0, and 45-6 winner over Brainerd. Carter goes to 3-0. and Seems like every Carter game is just down to the wire. They beat Webb in week one. They survived a four-hour, five-hour game, uh, lightning and everything with Sevier County in week two. And then tonight, stave off Gibbs, 42-35. to 35. It's an exciting or excuse me, exciting Carter team. Chandler Wilson, I think, almost threw for 300 tonight. Uh, ran for about 90 or 100 more. I mean, he's he's got the team on his back right now. Yeah, we, we like Chandler Wilson a lot. We liked him last year, and we saw some young players for Carter that we're really we're excited about, including the, the Blankenship young, uh, young man that plays mm-hmm. offense and defense. He's an interception machine, and he is, I mean, he's got sticky fingers, man. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. watching these guys Over play. 200 yards receiving in week two. He was our week two. Uh, Smith, Smith built Smith built homes. I, can't, I can never yeah, say that. Man. Smith built homes. Yeah. Uh, player of the week. Uh, over uh, just thousands of votes for that young man. And that's another offense here in the greater Knoxville area that you need to go check out. I mean, that they're they're for real. They can put up points in a hurry. West had a little bit of trouble with Hall tonight, but still they get the win to improve to three and zero, thirty to twenty two. Central gets a much needed win. Uh, they beat Sevier County tonight, thirty five to thirteen. Catholic beats Baylor. This was a big, big win for Corey Bobbs, the new head football coach at Catholic. Catholic has not fared that well in Division II AAA play since joining the league. Just a few wins here and there. Hadn't really done much in the playoffs, but for a new coach, a new coaching staff, to get this win against a, a Baylor team, that's that's something that they can really capitalize on. Yeah, I, I don't know that I can stress to our viewers how important this win is. New coaching staff, they're in a in a division that there is no there's no weeks off. Mm-hmm. Everybody has everybody's film each and every week. You can't hide anything from anybody. It's a very tough division, week in and week out, going on the road and then back at home for another big time opponent. This win is a huge for them in the way they did it. They had some defensive stops when they needed to. They gave up a lot of rushing yards. But like we talk about sometimes on defense, sometimes you give up yards from the 20 to the 20, hold them out of the end zone, get a turnover or cause a, a field goal. But tonight, they got a 99-yard interception return for a touchdown, so they scored defensively. Mm-hmm. And Tommy Witten went off tonight, seven receptions. Yep. He threw a pass. He had he, an interception. Yeah, had an interception. They found a way to get him the ball mm-hmm. and get him involved in the game. And I really like seeing him defensively because we know he's a playmaker and he's a ball hawk. Put him out there. Let him go make plays, and we saw that tonight. We talked about his recruiting. Any opportunity that he can showcase his athleticism, whether it's offense or defense, it makes him more valuable. Absolutely. And I, we saw that on display tonight, and they really got him involved. But a huge win. Baylor has got some really good talent on the outside, a mm-hmm. receiver, really good running back that went over 200 yards tonight. Catholic played opportunistic defense and did enough offensively to get a huge win in Division II Triple A. Oakdale springs up another win. They beat Midway 20. 20- to 19 again Oak Ridge wins 22 to 7 over Clinton Maryville wins easily over Farragut I think Noah Vaughn rushed for 150 yards uh, Carson Jones threw for 250 Markel Fortenberry uh, had a big night so just a kind of your normal stock win for Maryville big game next week against Alcoa yeah I'm I'm so excited about this game and, and I'm actually the most excited about the Hogs up front Maryville and Alcoa both so physical on the offensive line whose defensive line can hold up and make the most plays to me is going to be the key in this ball game. They got all both teams have athletes on the outside. Both teams have a bevy of running backs they can go to if they need to. They both have really big, stout quarterbacks that can run the football and make it 11 on 11 football with the quarterback run game. Which defensive line can get off blocks and make plays will be the difference next Friday night, and I'm really excited to see it. I think we'll bring Five Star Live out at Alcoa. If they'll have us again, we were there in week one. Why not come back uh, for the Battle of Pistol Creek? Some really big games next week. West and Fulton play. Uh, You got uh, Kingston and Rockwood, which should be a really good game. So a lot of big-time action coming up in week four. Jared said we have a trivia winner. We got it down there on the screen. There we go. Justin Price, that is correct. Justin Price, the head, Campbell County head, head coach, coach yeah. of Usa Star at Anderson County. He won Mr. Football back in 2001 right here at Anderson County. So uh, congratulations. We'll get you a prize pack, get in touch with you, and get a prize pack from Healthy James. Makes me feel good when we get a trivia question 
answered on the show. Yeah, I was actually I didn't I didn't know that one. I, I, I typically can try to get them, but I didn't know that one. Uh, it was fun to hear about Coach Price getting that as well. Yeah, every year I go down to the Mister Football Banquet. They put up all the past winners hanging up around uh, that gathering area in the Titan Stadium, Nissan Stadium, and I always see Justin Price's and take a picture and send it to him if I can. So uh, that was uh, 20 years ago. Hard to, hard to believe that was 20 years ago. And him and his brother, Price. The, the Price twins, mm-hmm. they're good football coaches, man, and and uh, they got a they got a they got a good chance this year to to get in the playoffs. I, th- I think they've got a good team. Yeah, had their game canceled, I think, this week because of COVID issues, but certainly they'll definitely be in the conversation for postseason. All right, that does it for Five Star Live tonight, presented by Waffle House. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks to everybody who played our, our trivia. We'll be back next week with another trivia question, uh, and hopefully, if they'll have us, we'll be out at Alcoa for the Battle of Pistol Creek between Alcoa and Maryville, the top two teams and the Five Star Preps rankings right here on Five Star Live, presented by Waffle House. Until then, we'll see you next week. You're watching Five Star Live, presented by Waffle House, East Tennessee's number one post-game high school football show, live, live, on location from the biggest game of the week, live interviews from the winning coaches and players, along with highlights from other games around East Tennessee. Your host, Jesse Smithy and Kevin Smith, with decades of experience covering and coaching high school sports, along with the five-star preps team, will update you on games as they become final and will break down region outlooks and what's to come for your favorite football teams and top players. Now, get ready for the most comprehensive high school football coverage in Tennessee on Five Star Live. Live. Everybody, this is R.A. Dickey, former Vol and NL Cy Young Award winner in 2012. I'd love for you to join me for the FCA Night of Influence Banquet on September the 15th. That's September the 15th at Knoxville Expo Center. You can go to fcaknoxville.org for more information. Join me. You're not going to want to miss it. North Knox Siding and Windows is a complete exterior home improvement company that can help you with all your exterior needs. Visit us today at 5618 North Broadway. Shop at Elliott's. Your journey is our purpose. You're watching Five Star Live. Live. East Tennessee's number one post game high school football show. Live on location from the biggest game of the week. Live interviews from the winning coaches and players, along with highlights from other big games from around Tennessee. Your host, Jesse Smithy, with decades of experience covering high school sports, and his five star preps team will update you on games as they become final and will break down region outlooks and what's to come for your favorite football teams and top players. Players. Now, get ready for the most comprehensive high school football coverage in Tennessee on Five Star Live.